Happy Friday. I hope y'all are all having a great morning so far. Um, hi, if you're new here, my name is Carly Bell and I love doing machine embroidery tutorials and like to get together with you here either on Facebook or YouTube every other Friday for something we call Sip and Stitch. This Friday is morning edition. So I have my water. I already drank all my coffee. I ran out before the, I even was ready this morning <laughs> to start. But I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for joining me. Let me just check the chat real quick. So hi, Betty and Lauren and Ken, Kim and Debbie Jean and Star, Mary and Norma. I'm so glad y'all are all here with me this morning, especially Norma, because she is on the West Coast. And I know it's very early for her. So thank you, Norma, <laughs> for joining, joining me this morning. Hey, Carol. All right. I'm so glad all of y'all are here this morning. Um, today's Sip and Stitch is a very exciting one because for a few reasons, we got a lot of stuff going on. But um, to tell you what the project is today, we are going to be learning about applique. We're going to be working on my brother Persana um, embroidery machine, which is a, a really nice machine and the one that I upgraded um, to when once I had my small flatbed PE 770 for a long time. This is the machine I upgraded to first. Um, so we're going to be working on that machine and we're doing a new to me and maybe new to you technique of adding like a 3D effect to the applique using ribbon and it's called a Rick Rack um, ribbon effect that we're doing. And all of this is working with my friend Jennifer at Hooked on Applique um, and she has these amazing Rick Rack um, designs uh, that are in incorporated into some of her appliques and they're really, really fun to make and they look very, very pretty. So that is the project. So here's a little preview of what I'm talking about here, if this will focus. So you see the ribbon um, gives it that 3D effect. So we're going to make a shirt with this design today. So that's the project. So good morning, everybody. I see everybody on Facebook and YouTube. I'm so glad y'all joined me. Um, so two other really big things that I'm excited for on today's show is one, we're having a huge giveaway. I think this is probably the biggest giveaway we have done. And this is all thanks to Jennifer at Hooked on Applique. Today, for those watching the show live, one lucky winner is going to win Hooked on Applique's entire design collection and this is well over a thousand designs and appliques um, everything that is on the hooked on applique website one lucky viewer is going to win today so in order to be entered to win this giveaway one you need to be watching live two you need to comment if you're on youtube you need to be signed in and comment in the live chat if you don't have a YouTube sign in, but you have a Facebook sign in, go to Facebook, find the video and just comment under the video on Facebook. So all those comments will get you entered to win today's giveaway. Oh, actually, that reminds me. I need to open that one second. <laughs> I got to open up another screen and make sure the giveaway is tallying everything. I always forget something. Okay, do, 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 do. why aren't you going to the screen I need? Oh, I should have had this ready before. I'm sorry, guys. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to figure that out in a second. I usually just have to go to one screen and it and it does it for me, but I know... Once I click it, it'll, it'll 
even if you've commented already, it's going to count it in there. So I'm going to get that figured out in a second. But that is the giveaway for today. Somebody's going to win the entire Hooked on Applique design collection. So thank you so much, Jennifer, for offering that today um, for our viewers. Now, if you're watching the replay and you didn't get to watch it live and be entered in the giveaway, we still have a coupon code for you. So, um, and and all of the all of you watching live today. So at the where is it at here? Um, hooked on applique.com. I think it's dot com. I hope Jennifer. Sometimes, yes, it is dot com. Okay. Um, you can get 10% um, off of your purchase using the coupon code CARLY. So K A R L I E, coupon code for today. Now, what's even better is the design that we're making today, the Rick Rack Pumpkin. She's got it listed for free on her website right now. So you can go and download this design for free at Hooked on Applique. And I have the link that brings you directly to this design in the description box um, below or above the video um, so that you can go and get this for free. All right, let me see. Yeah, everybody's excited. So we got a giveaway, we got a free design. So thank you to Jennifer for all of that. So my other big um, announcement and fun thing that I have going on today is I have opened registration for my Sip and Stitch Holiday Workshop. So this will be my second annual holiday workshop. We did it last year. It was a lot of fun. Um, last year, we did four projects. This year, we're doing five. And I reached out to several um, of my favorite embroidery digitizers, and they each agreed to make one exclusive design just for this holiday workshop. So those designers are Creative Applique, um, Applique Alley, Designs by Little B, Lenny Penny, and Alphalicious Designs. And so we have five fun projects. Um, and I have some pictures so y'all could see. Okay, so the Sip and Stitch Holiday Workshop. It is a Zoom class style workshop with very interactive um, and it's going to take place November 14th through 18th. So there'll be one class every day. And if you can't make it to the actual live Zoom class, everything is recorded and you will get lifetime access to everything um, in the workshop. And here is the preview of the five projects we'll be making. A mug rug, a bag tag. We're going to um, put that rocking around the Christmas tree design on a sweatshirt and kind of like an upper left placement design. We are going to make a pillow with those three um, applique presents. And we have the stocking um, mini notebook cover as well. And those that's an in the hoop project. So we have three in the hoop projects, a sweatshirt and a pillow is what we're going to be making for the sip and stitch workshop. So I have the link to register in the description box below. So I think it's like 23, I think 23 days until the workshop starts that you can register ahead of time and um, have everything you need to be ready to start the first Zoom class on November 14th. So I'm really excited about this year's workshop and all the fun projects that we have. So I look forward to seeing hopefully a bunch of you um, in the workshop next month. All right. So. Let's go ahead and talk about, so we talked about, so today's project is the applique with the Rick Rack ribbon. So let's go over the supplies you are going to need for this project. Now, um, as I said before, I am doing this on my brother, Persana, and I'm, I'm going to make the five by seven design and put on this shirt. Now, just because I'm using the Persona doesn't mean that this project can only be done on this machine. This project can be done on any machine. Um, I did my, my test stitch on my flatbed Altair in a five by seven hoop. You could do this on the um, PE 800, the, the six by 10 hoop machine. So any machine can make this. For shirts, I really like using my free arm machine um, because it makes hooping a lot easier. And then my Durkee easy frames 
are the best when it comes to floating my shirts onto the hoop and putting everything together. So that's what I'm using today. Um, so I have my shirt. I have my five by seven um, easy frame. It is an applique. So I have three pieces of fabric picked out for the pumpkin, the stem and the leaf. And I already have heat and bond light um, ironed onto the back of my fabric. And we'll go over heat and bond light and why that's great for applique. Um, then the ribbon, because we're doing that ribbon effect. We, I have some um, ribbon. The one I'm using is five and eight, uh, five eighths of an inch. And I got it at Hobby Lobby, but y'all you know, know y'all can get ribbon anywhere. Lots of places. Um, I got all my little tools here. I have my marker. This is a fabric water soluble and also air soluble um, marker. My Tide pin, my tweezers, and my favorite applique scissors. I have a little ruler. Um, you're, you are going to need some kind of tape with helping the ribbon stay in place before it stitches. Um, you, you can use masking tape, scotch tape. I have my Kimberbell paper tape. Then let's talk stabilizers. So whenever I um, go to stabilize a shirt, um, my typical combination is um, no-show poly mesh, and I like to use a fusible one. So I'm going to iron it on the back of the shirt. And then I usually use a tearaway. And if I'm working on a flatbed machine, I'm using a regular tearaway or even a fusible tearaway before I hoop it. Um, since I'm working with the easy frames, I'm using my sticky tearaway. And I have some pre-cut sheets of the peel and stick, which makes it a lot of really easy to get all my staple stabilizer situated. Um, I'm also going to, in one step, sometimes on these knit shirts and you got a really big, um, pretty satin column to make sure that the stitching on the side of the column is nice and crisp and you don't have any kind of jagged or heathered effect because it's pulling on the knit fabric. I do like to use a water soluble topper um, before it stitches that satin column. So I'm probably going to put that on the shirt as well. It's not required. This is just a personal preference for me um, with using a topper on a shirt. And typically I use toppers on fuzzy blankets and towels and things like that. And then, is this it? No. Where's my... And then when we are done, I have to find it. Here it is. Um, because this shirt is for a kid and we don't want the, the stitching on the inside of the shirt to rub against their skin and bother them. I have something that's called Fuse So Soft, So Soft. It's a um, fusible um, interfacing for the back of the shirt once we're done, just to keep those threads from uh, scratching and um, aggravating the, the kid's skin on the inside of the shirt. I think that is all the supplies. I tried to lay everything out so I'd remember. The only other thing I have behind me is my little mini iron and my um, pressing mat because we are going to iron the applique before the satin stitch, activating that heat and bond light. So let me check the computer real quick and um, see. I see some people have some questions and I still need to get this giveaway thing. Here we go. Nope, that's not it. Why is it not working? There we go. Got it. Okay, it's got everybody's comments collected. Um, already. It's already up to 50. So everybody that commented already, you are entered. All right. Now I'm checking for questions. Um, okay. So LaDonna asked if I have a list of stabilizers that I can get cheaper on Amazon. Um, and as she likes to spend her money on the designs and her blanks, 
but can we get cheaper stabilizer? So I have two stabilizer options. I do have a, um, a shop on Amazon and let me make a thing so you could see. So it's amazon.com slash shop slash Carly Bell. Um, that is my um, shop on Amazon. And I have a, a, a section that is all those beginner embroidery supplies. However, I have not found them to be significantly cheaper than the Stay Perfect brand that I get from Sewing Machines Plus. And at Sewing Machines Plus, you can use my coupon code Carly Bell to save 10% off of your purchase. So either look on Amazon, World Winder um, is a good brand, Stay Stable, and then of course Sulky. But Sulky tends to be more expensive. Um, but I find the Stay Perfect at Sewing Machines Plus um, is a good, reasonably priced stabilizer. And you can use that coupon code. The link went away too fast. Okay, let me put it back up. So that's my Amazon shop. So you can look at that. All right. Um, da -dum -dum -dum. All right, Sherry X, do I like this brand of Fuse So Soft better than Tender Touch? Yes, Sherry. Um, Tender Touch tends to come off super easily, and I find the Fuse So Soft, Fuse so soft stays a little better, and I have some pointers on helping it stay better as well. Um, I'm just scrolling up to see. I don't think I see any more. Um, all right, Amy asked if there's a link to all of the designers that are involved with um, the Sip and Stitch workshop, the holiday workshop. Um, I think I tagged all of them in a post on my Facebook page this morning, Amy. So go look at my Facebook page where I announce registration is open and I tag each of the designers in it so you can go to their pages and see the kind of work that they do. But they're all amazing. All amazing. All right, so let's go on now to um, getting everything prepped and ready. So first, let me make sure my iron's hot. All right, and I'm gonna move some things over. Oh, we talked about, we'll talk about the ribbon after. Let's get the shirt ready. All right, so I have my little shirt. Now this is um, just a shirt I had already in my craft room. I usually prefer to um, use a nice embroidery blank, like AJ Blanks, ARB, Blanks Boutique, but I did not have any in the size I needed, and I don't have time to order and wait for one to come in. So this was a little Walmart shirt that I already had in my stash. Um, so that's what I'm using today. So I have done well with these shirts when I use the two layers of stabilizer. If you're working with a really thin shirt, usually adding an extra layer of tearaway or even doing two layers of the poly mesh will help stabilize the shirt better. If it has a very dense design with lots of heavy stitching, um, you might want to stabilize it a little bit better. But I think with today's design, um, my mesh and tear away combination is going to work well. So this is, I'm doing a five by seven design. Usually when I'm trying to figure out the placement of the design on the shirt, I use my grids that come with my hoops. Now the easy frames don't come with grids, but I have a five by seven grid that came with my hoops for my flatbed machines. So I am using that to figure out where I want my design. So I got five and a half is the center. And I usually like to go about inch and a half, two inches um, from the collar. Now, when the design is there, it doesn't, the top of the design won't be quite where the top of this line is. 
So I'm going to do an inch and a half. And I know it'll be a smidge below that. So it'll be close to two when it's finished. So once I see where I want my design, I use my little marker. Oh no, this one doesn't have holes in it. I need to get another one. That's one that came with, um, ugh, where are all my grids? Sorry about that. Here we go. That grid's no good. This one's better. Okay. Center. Okay, so that's where I want it. This grid has little holes in it to where I could put my marker. And then once I have those marks, I'm going to use my ruler to draw some crosshairs. And this is where I'm going to want my design to be. And when I get it on the machine, I want my needle to land right here in the center. Okay, I'm looking at the chat while I'm doing this. So Kathy's having trouble with the workshop. Kathy, I'll help you when I'm done um, the show today to make sure that you're getting everything in the workshop. All right, Hope X is a good question. Um, what's the difference between easy frames versus fast frames? Um, I, the, the experience that I have had is that the Durkee Easy Frames are much thicker and sturdier than the Fast Frames. The Fast Frames tend to be a lot more, um, the, the material is thinner. Um, the aluminum I'm guessing that it's made with is thinner. This one I feel is can take more on it. Like when you're floating something, you know, it's hanging off of it and it stays on sturdier. It has two points to attach it to the adapter where the fast frame is only gonna have one. So that's why I like the Durkee Easy Frames better than the fast frames. Okay, once you mark your shirt, turn it inside out and I'm gonna cut a piece of poly mesh. And iron that, let me move this, um, on the back of the shirt. And I could kind of see my little marks that I made on the front through the shirt. So I know that I'm putting my poly mesh right where it should be. All right, LaDonna X, if I have a preference of a flatbed versus a um, multi-needle for clothing, um, definitely the multi-needle. Um, so I have, I have two machines that are what's called a free arm machine, and that you'll, you'll see the persona in a second. Well, look, I'll sh show it to you now so you see what I'm talking about. Okay, um, where the needle comes down and that little arm that's below it, that is a free arm machine. That is going to allow you to um, hoop things that are, oops, really hard to hoop on a flatbed machine. Um, but this machine that you're looking at now is a single needle. It's only one needle. Um, but it gives me the capabilities of a multi-needle because of that free arm. And then I do also have a multi-needle, 10-needle um, Recoma as well. So both of those are my go-tos for shirts, bags, um, hard to hoop things. All right, so I ironed my poly mesh on the back of there. And I'm gonna leave this up here now. All right, don't need this anymore at the moment. Now we're gonna get 
the stabilizer ready on the easy frame. So for the easy frame, you're going to turn it over and you can get peel and stick tear away in a roll or you can get it in sheets. What's nice about the sheets is that it's going to lie flat when you're ready to cut it and um, and adhere it to your frame. So um, you'll know that with when it's all rolled up, it can be a pain in the book. So I'm gonna do that. And I could save this piece to use for another project. Turn this over. <laughs> Karen's like, you gotta make me buy a free art machine now. Oh, I'm sorry. I know I'm a, um, what it, uh, what's the word? Not an instigator, but a, um, ah, I can't remember. It starts with an E. But I, it took me a really long time to go from my PE 770 to my persona. But once I had it, I was like, why didn't I do this five years ago? All right, I put that sticky stabilizer. And what I do is I'll hold it and then pull. And then like I'll stick it here and pull and then kind of pull on the corners. You want it to be as tight as possible. And then once you get it, then kind of rub it all down. Enabler, thank you, Angela. I'm sorry, I'm an enabler. I enable myself, it's a problem. <laughs> And everybody that I watch on YouTube and Facebook enables me too. So y'all are not the only ones. <laughs> but the Persona is a really great machine. And if you are interested in learning more about it, I do have a video all about it. And I have a direct contact at um, Sewing Machines Plus where I got my machine. Um, her name is Jean. She is wonderful. She is going to get you the best deal on this machine. Um, she's going to help you with picking out accessories, which I'm also here for you with that as well. And then if you um, do buy from Sewing Machines Plus with Jean and tell her that I referred you, I'll give you access to my private persona owners Facebook group where I have video trainings on how to use the machine in there to get you started and get you knowing how everything functions on it. So interested in the persona, call Jean. And she can help you get a good deal. And I know Christmas is coming up and they usually have some really good deals with giving some accessories away with it. All right. Now that I have my sticky stabilizer, I, they have some little notches in here that I'm using to draw crosshairs. And with that, I am going to try to put my shirt in here and layer these crosshairs on top of these. So let me get her phone number out of the way so you can see better. All right. Yay, Kathy said Jean was awesome to deal with when she ordered. Yay. I'm oh, glad she's, she's super helpful. And she has my coupon code as well. So she's gonna help get you every discount that you can get. All right. Um, LaDonna asks, do they ever have machines that have been traded in? Yes, they do on occasion. And I think right now they're even doing a thing where you can trade in your old machine with them. I think I saw an email about that. So call Jean and ask her what they have going on and she'll be able to help you out. Um, so Donna X is a good question. What if you already have a persona, a persona? Is it possible to join the group? What I've done for, for those that have already um, purchased a persona but is interested in seeing the video trainings that I have, um, I have uploaded them to my CF Fans membership group. And they're all available to watch anytime if you are a member of the CF Fans membership group. 
Um, and I have a link for that in the description box below. Um, what my membership group is, it's, um, it's a way, um, cause a lot of people have told me, you know, they're super thankful for all of my free tutorials and, um, you know, ask how is it that they can help support me to continue doing this. And my group is a way to help me with that. It is um, $9 per month to join. And every month I do a private Zoom class for um, members. And I also give a free embroidery design every month. So all the CFAM members get a free Zoom class a month, which is super helpful if you want to just talk to me and ask questions um, while we're working and um, the free design and then you'll get access to all those persona trainings all right okay so as you saw I just kind of stuck the shirt on top of the sticky stabilizer trying to line up those crosshairs um, the stable the sticky is like not too sticky so it's easy to pull away and lay back down um, so you can do that and just make sure you got it where you want it and the main thing that I like to make sure that, because we we can move the needle, we can make sure, but you want to make sure it's straight across this way. You don't want your pumpkin to be wonky on the side. All right. So now that we have this, we're going to stitch some things before I add the water-soluble topper. And I need to put this where I could see it because I will forget it to put it. <laughs> All right. Now... You have two options when you're working with shirts. I either could have hooped this upside down and had the little brackets come out on this side, or you can hoop it through the neck. It's really up to you, but you do want to make sure that your shirt, you try to get as little as you can going here, and then the rest will hang down. So now we will put this on the adapter. And they just kind of yeah, just slide right underneath those thumb screws. And I kind of like press it against my stomach and I, um, to like make sure it's, it's pushed in all the way. And you'll see it's flush right here to make sure it's in all the way. And then you're going to tighten those thumb screws. All right, so just make sure everything's out of the way. So that's it. Now we're ready to go to the machine and put start stitching the placement stitches and such for applique. All right, so here's the machine. Um, okay, LaDonna asked another question. So do we need matching bobbin thread? Um, for embroidery. No, you do not. I always use a white 90 weight bobbin thread for all of my embroidery. The only exception when I change out the bobbin thread is when I'm doing some sort of in the hoop project where it looks a lot cleaner um, because the back of the object is going to get seen. And look, I'll show you an example. Um, this is a bag tag we're going to make for the holiday workshop, right? It, it has a satin stitch edge. To make it look really nice, I did change my bobbin to match that blue top thread. So when you turn it over, it's all nice and clean. So that's the one time I change it. But for the shirts and most of the projects that I do, I just use my 90 weight white um, bobbin thread. Hey, everybody. So I see a lot of things going on in this chat. Thanks everyone for joining. That's come in a little bit later. Um, and now when I'm at my machine, I can't see my computer in chat. So if you have any questions, I'm gonna let you know in a little while when I'm back and I can see to, to ask me those questions so that I don't miss anything. So I got a lot of wires going on here. <laughs> um, so here's a persona. I have already oiled it which I teach in my um, trainings on the persona, this machine, you have to clean it and oil it. Not, I mean, cleaning is very minimal, but you do have to put a drop of oil on the bobbin. There's a special spot in there every time you turn it on. So every, well, every if you're using it um, multiple times a day, then just one day, once a day. Um, but every time I turn my machine on, 
I oil the, the special spot on the, um, the bobbin case. Um, I've already uploaded my design on my USB stick and um, have it open and ready to go on the machine. And the design only requires four different color threads. Um, and I have all four of those threads on my thread rack up here in the back, if you can see, um, and the first color thread going through. And then you'll see later on how I change the thread color. So I am going to slide this in. And when I do this, I make sure that I could still see the, the free arm down here went through the shirt and didn't get the shirt didn't get caught up. So it went through the neck hole um, nicely and didn't get caught up. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but right now my needle is here and my center point is here. When you're working with easy frames, you're always going to have to move your needle to be where you where you want it to be. So the placement marks really help with getting that right. So I love, I'm gonna hit embroidery because now my little laser pointer is gonna show up. That's gonna help me a lot. Now I'm gonna move it. And every time I press the button, it moves right there. So now my little laser pointer is right in the middle of the placement mark that I put. And before I start, I always like to trace my design to make sure this needle is not going to hit this metal frame because we're working with a hoop that didn't come with the machine and especially one that has so many interchangeable pieces right now the machine thinks i have an eight by eight hoop in so it's going to allow me to stitch anywhere in an eight by eight field but i don't i have a five by seven um uh attachment in so it's really important that you trace and you can do that by pressing this little dashed line square that has an arrow and it's going to move and I can follow my little laser pointer and see exactly where my design is going to go. Um, it like outlines the edge of the design. So that's where the top's going to be and the sides and then it goes back to the center when it's done. So I could see from that little pointer, it's not going to go anywhere near my um close to my frame um all right so the first parts of the design is the placement stitch for um and tack down for the pumpkin the stem and the leaf i'm gonna do all of that in the same thread color because you're not going to see it. it's going to get covered up um, and we'll go through those steps now so i'm gonna hit lock and start and i did it in a mint color because that's the first, um, let me step away. The first um, satin stitch is the leaf. So to reduce thread changes, I loaded that thread color first. All right, I'm back at my computer now. Um, so the Persana's largest hoop size is eight by eight. There is a um, repositionable 8 by 14 hoop um, that Durkee made where you can split a design in half and stitch one side 8 by 8 and another side um, 8 by 8 and it comes together where it looks seamless. And I have a training on that um, in the Persona group or the, the CF fans group. All right. Do pre-wound bobbins only come in white? No, they do offer a, um, white and black usually as a, as a big multi-pack. And I have seen um, like Bro Thread offer like a little um, variety set like of like 12 or 24 colors. Um, but my recommendation is just to wind your own bobbin of the top thread. Um, it's okay if it's not 90 weight or 60 weight um, for whatever project you're doing, but you want the colors to match. All right, this is my piece of fabric that I want for the pumpkin. I'm peeling off the heat and bond light and I'm placing it right on top, the placement stitch that it just did. And I just make sure that it like covers it completely. You can't see it. Um, I don't tape it down or secure it in any way. Usually once it starts stitching, it's fine. So we just put that right on top and go. And that, now this is the tack down stitch. So with applique, we have usually three steps. 
placement stitch is going to show you where to put your fabric. Tack down stitch is going to do what it, what it says, tack down the fabric to whatever item you're appliquing. Um, then you need to trim, which I'll show you. And the last step is the final stitch, which in this case is a satin stitch. And that's going to cover up all your raw edge of your fabric that you have trimmed. All right. Um, Mary has a good question. Her threads keep shredding on her brother, single needle, dream machine. What kind of thread are you using, Mary? There's a few things that could be going on there. It could be your machine just does not like that brand of thread, and that happens. Machines can be picky. Um, when's the last time you changed your needle? Um, and I really like using a thread stand on my flatbed machines um, for the help of feeding the thread off of the spool and making sure it's going into the machine with the right amount of tension. So here you could see the tack down stitch. So now we're gonna go over to the craft table and I'm gonna show you how to trim. All right. Now, um, these are my, my favorite scissors and I'm just going to keep turning this, but I'm going to lift up. You want to make sure you're not grabbing your shirt or whatever you're appliquing by accident. You only want to trim the applique fabric. And so I'm just using my stitch as a guideline. And I'm just trying to, to trim as close to my stitch line as possible. All right, I see some questions about bobbins. All right. What size is the bobbin for the persona? So the persona bobbins are not the same as all of our, our brother and baby lock flatbed machines. The flatbed machines uses um, size or style A. The persona and my multi-needle machine both use style or size L. And um, I get the pre-wound magnetic backed bobbins from Filtech. Um, and I get a, just like a big box of pre-wound ones. And then I saw someone else ask, is it possible to wind your own bobbin on the persona? Yes, the persona does have a bobbin winder on the side as all brother and baby lock machines have their own um, bobbin winder so that you can make your own bobbins. You just have to start with the size L bobbin, which I think they give you some like little... Um, bobbin uh cases to do if you want to pre if you want to wind your own all right so i'm almost done trimming and this is the thing i think uh, people get intimidated the most with applique the more you do it the better you get at it practice makes perfect <laughs> so I tell my little girls um the, literally, it's the more you do it, the better you get. And the faster you get too. Because applique can be really time consuming, especially if you have a bunch of different pieces of different fabric. So we are done with trimming that. And we're going to go back to the machine. And it is going to now stitch, um, I don't know, either the leaf or the, the stem. I can't remember. Every time I go on and off the machine, I want to make sure that free arm is going through my neck hole of my shirt and my shirt's not getting caught up. Um, all right, so I'm going to hit lock and go. And now it's doing the leaf. And I got my leaf fabric. Right here, I just peel the heat and bond light off the back. And just cover the placement stitch. Oops, press the unlock, yeah, lock, go. All right, now it's gonna do that. And now since you've seen me trim on the, on the table, um, you know, at a closer angle, I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this while I'm at the machine. So that just keeps me from having to take the shirt on and off 
multiple times. And I do this whenever the piece of applique is like simple and not hard to get to with my scissors while it's still on. But if it's anything tedious or where I can't get the angle I need, then I always take it off and go to my table and, and trim it. So this just helps you to go a little faster if you're not taking it on and off every time. But like I said, it has to be where it's a good spot and you can get to everything. So I trimmed the leaf and now it's going to stitch, excuse me, the placement for the stem. Oh, I see something wrong with threading, right? Okay. So I've got a bunch of stuff there. All right, the thread, the upper thread broke. So a couple things. We have to just pull it through and re-thread it. Um, it's threaded correctly everywhere through here. So I just have to go through this hole here, number six. There's a bar that it has to go and then um, thread the needle. So let me pull that. Tweezers. Okay, so it's behind that needle bar, and then I'm going to press the needle threading button. These little prongs come out, and I hold my thread. It goes under those prongs, and this is a little thread cutter here. And now the needle is threaded again, but I have a little mess on my shirt. I need to go clean up, so I think I'm just going to go. Ah, and the bobbin thread is still attached. And I'm gonna cut that. All right, so we're gonna go clean up this little mess. All right. So when the thread broke, it made this little mess here. So I'm gonna go back and restitch all of this. So I'm just gonna cut it out and just try to pull it out as much as I can but it's okay because this is all getting stitched over and applique over. Clean that up. And it's fine that it's on the back. Okay, so now we're ready to go back and we just have to back up the step that we're on. All right, and I need to, I'm gonna take my bobbin. All right, re-put my bobbin in so that the tail is where it's supposed to be. Did I click the machine? No, you're still on the craft table. There we go, now you see the machine. All right, so everything's ready. Again, I'll make sure we go in through that neck hole. Make sure that's clicked in. That's good. Okay, so I want to start over this whole step. So I'm going to go to needle plus minus, and then I'm going to hit the minus spool, and that's backed me up to the beginning of this step. And then we'll lock and go. All right. And now that's the stem and I have the fabric for the stem. Took the heat and bond off and now stitch that. Okay, so that is done. I'm gonna take this off and go to the table for a couple reasons, not just to trim it, but we're gonna do something else. So we'll trim this, but with applique, what I do, I got that heat and bond on the, on the back. 
um, before we do that satin stitch, that final stitch, I'm going to iron the applique pieces to activate that heat and bond so that the applique fabric is fused with the shirt fabric. And that's going to help a couple things. One, it helps with fraying. So when you're trimming, you're not producing all those little frays of fabric everywhere. Um, that is really important when you're doing applique, like the vintage stitch look where um, you have the raw fabric showing. It keeps it from fraying so much. Um, then um, when you wash the shirt, it can get to where the applique fabric kind of pulls away from and bubbles out from the shirt and it just does not look great after you wash it. This prevents that from happening. So I'm just getting those in. And like I said, I like to do this before the satin stitch. All right, and that's it. Oops. Ugh. Dropped my thing. Okay, so now we're go to the machine and it's gonna start doing, it's gonna do the satin stitch for the leaf. I think the stem and then the pumpkin. And while it's doing those satin stitches, cause that takes a while, we're gonna go over the ribbon part, okay? Um, machine. All right, make sure that's through. Okay, I could see my next step is my leaf. I already have my leaf colored thread loaded. That's why I loaded this one to do all my placement stitches so I could run through them. And now I'm gonna hit lock and go. Oh wait, no. See, I told you I was gonna forget. I'm going to cut, close, lock, cut. This is the spot. I want this water soluble topper to be underneath those satin stitches. Where's my scissors? Okay. I think it will give my satin stitches a really crisp edge on the columns. So I'm going to back up the step again. So it starts from the beginning and lock and go. So I just put that water soluble topper covering the whole area that's getting embroidered. All right. I am back at my computer. Yay, Renee says this live is so helpful. I'm so glad. Mary says shirts are so hard on the drink machine. Yes, that was the reason I got this machine because the majority of the things that I made because I had two little girls was shirts and onesies are nearly impossible on a flatbed machine. Um, so that is the whole reason why I got this machine. Now the dream machine and like I have the, um, the baby lock Altair, they're amazing. And I do a lot of projects on them, but shirts is not one of them. Uh, Mary, I sweat iron. That is the Cricut Easy Press Mini Iron. I think I have a link for it. Um, either down below or on the sip and stitch homepage. So um, all of the um, supplies that I use for this project, I update this page on my website. So my website is carlybell.com and there's a sip and stitch option in the top menu. Um, I update that every other week with what projects we're doing and all the supplies you will need for that project and links to the designs and just all the info like I posted all about the giveaway and the link to the free um, the free pumpkin design that we're doing. Um, so all that info is on there. If you don't see what you're looking for in the description box. Um, so Anita asks if my little iron is cordless. No, it is not cordless. Krista X, is there a difference between water soluble topper and water soluble? Um, it, it needs to be the topper. It almost looks like um, saran wrap. Oh, you're talking about there are there is another 
type of stabilizer. I call it wash away. Here's some down here. Um, it's woven. No, that's not it. Where is my wash away? I don't know where it is, but it does look like that. It's woven and it's white. And that's the kind of uh, stabilizers you want to use for those in the hoop projects, like that bag tag I showed you a little while ago. Or if you do freestanding lace, you want the water soluble or wash away woven stabilizer. It's white. This one looks like clear saran wrap. All right, so we're done with the leaf. Now we're going to load the brown thread for the, um, for the, what you call, the stem. So I'm gonna back up a little bit so you can see me working up here. So this is my green thread. They have thread cutters up here. So I'm gonna cut it. So that's the green thread already threaded. This is my brown thread. I have it going through the top. I tie them. I do like around twice and then loop and around twice to make a knot that won't pull out when you pull on it. So it's like a tight knot, do that. And then at the bottom here, I pull it out from the needle and I just pull. And now I'm ready for brown thread. And I hit my needle threader button. So now my, um, my machine is all ready to go with the next color thread for my design. So you see like changing thread colors is not bad on here at all. And then some people don't like tying. It is just as easy to run it through the thread path. If you have trouble, like sometimes my fingers don't cooperate. All right, everything's good. So now we're doing the stem. See that? Hi, Stacy. Yes, the the thread cutters um, at the top of your thread rack are awesome. I love that because I all at all my other machines I have to keep a little pair of scissors all the time. This one I don't. So Mary asks, is there a top and bottom the, the poly mesh? Yes, the poly mesh I'm using is fusible. So you can tell one side of it is shiny and that's the side you're gonna want to put down to the shirt, but it only goes underneath the shirt. The poly mesh is going on the back side of the shirt. The tearaway is going on the back side of the shirt. The water soluble topper is going on top of the shirt. So you have three things going on right now. Okay, and for anyone that is joining in late, we are having a big giveaway on today's show. So if you're watching live, if you're on YouTube, make sure you sign in and uh, comment in the live chat. Or if you're on Facebook, just comment under the video um, and you will automatically be entered into win today's giveaway, which is the entire design collection of Hooked on Applique, which is the... Um, where I got today's design from. And today's design is available for free on the Hooked On Applique website. And I have a link directly to it in the description box, either above or below the video. All right, I just cut my brown thread, tying it to my, got kind of like a coral peachy color thread for the pumpkin. Like that and then pull. Oh, I did something. Excuse me if I'm in the way my thread when I was tying it. It went around something it wasn't supposed to. All right. There we go. Needle. Okay, now that's ready and it's going to do the pumpkin. So the pumpkin's going to take the longest and now make sure everything's good up here. Um, 
we can go talk about the ribbon because the ribbon is the most exciting part. All right. So I'm going to switch you over. Um, all right. So let's talk about the ribbon. All right. We don't need this right now. Okay. So let's look at our example design. So we see that ribbon. So you have a few options on getting an effect that you want. Um, the option I am showing you, you will need a sewing machine. Um, it's possible for you to also um, hand sew it as well, but it's easier with a sewing machine. If you don't want to do that, you still can still, you can still use, let me find some in my closet here. Oh, I can't get it off though. I have some traditional Rick Rack ribbon in my closet. I'll try and get it after, but it's, just, it's a little ribbon that just goes swiggly, right? Um, you can put that there as well if you don't want to deal with this, doing this effect that we have going. So to do this, you want to cut a piece of ribbon that is double the length of the project. So what I did was I just held my ribbon and I just made it twice as long and I gave myself a little extra wiggle room. So measure, and you can measure that either by printing out the design or just looking at it on your computer um, you should be able to click. And I know in in brilliance, it gives me the measurement of things that I click. So, um, that is how you determine how much ribbon you need. Now, this might be hard to see, but on your sewing machine, there's two options for this one. I just stitched a basting stitch right down the middle of my ribbon. So, and you want it to be the longest stitch length that your, um, sewing machine can do. So I set mine, I think five. Um, and I just ran one stitch right down the middle of it. And you want to make sure you have tails on the end for your bobbin thread and you just pull your bobbin thread and you're going to gather it. Okay. If you've ever gathered any material for like making a skirt or anything like that, it's kind of the same process, but you're just doing one. Now, the other way that I really like that I learned from Jennifer, I cooked on applique, um, is that she, instead of stitch, stitching a straight line down the ribbon, she stitched a zigzag. So can you see that? So I, I started here. I did, it's only like four stitches. Like my needle just goes up and down four or five times. And then I went here and then I went here and here and so on. So I, I zigzagged up and down the length of the ribbon. Okay. So once you have that done, or your straight stitch, whichever one you prefer, you're going to want to pull the bobbin thread, and you're just scrunching your ribbon and just pulling it, pulling it down. And you can work from both directions. Like I'll work from the top a little bit, like that. You can keep going and get it as scrunchy looking as you want and then I'll work from the bottom and just go from there so that's why you want that long stitch length so it's uh it's more workable for you to be able to scrunch all that ribbon and pull the bobbin thread through it so you get something like this when you're done okay and you just make it look how you want And I have another one already done here. So I have two pieces of ribbon that now have a rick rack back and forth effect on them because of that zigzag stitch we did and then gathered it. The other really um, cool thing that I learned from Jennifer is they sell a gathering foot for your sewing machine. And she's able to like buy a whole roll of, of ribbon. And with that gathering um, foot, she'll zigzag, she'll rickrack this whole roll of ribbon and then she'll have it ready to go. Um, so that's a really fun thing. And I, I ordered that, um, that gathering foot uh, from the link on her video, and, um, but it hasn't come in yet. So I haven't been able to play with it, but I'm excited to play with that, not only for the ribbon, but for some other sewing projects that I wanna do. So 
I saw someone that said, can you use Rick Rack ribbon that is wavy already? Yes. And I have some. Let me go see if I can cut it. Um, I have some in my craft closet, but it's on like a, um, a spool that I keep all my ribbon on. And I, I can't take the, the spool off because it's like hooked in there. It's got it to wear like, um, it's almost like a dispenser for all my ribbon. Now I got to find the end. Here we go. All right, here's a piece of Rick Rack ribbon. Okay. This is Rick Rack ribbon. So you can buy this ready to go and use that for your applique if you want to do this instead of the regular old ribbon that you kind of Rick Rack yourself. Does that make sense? So that's your, that's our, that are all your options for how you want to add that 3D ribbon effect to your applique. So when I did this one, and I'll show you um, when it's ready, I did, so a couple things, you are going to want to take a lighter or some um, fray check and line that on the edges of your ribbon. And for this one, I did try to fold the raw edge down and I taped it in place before I sewed it. So that's something that you can do as well. And we'll try that with this when it's ready for that part. So any questions about the ribbon? So yeah, Tracy, I did you finish the edge. So we're just gonna use either Freytech or lighter. I think I have both. Um, to finish the edge of the ribbon. I don't actually sew the edge of the ribbon. Yay, Kimberly said she'll be wearing this design to hand out candy for the kitties on Halloween. Yay, that's gonna be super cute. So this design would be adorable on a ton of different things. A shirt, whether for an adult or a kid. A tote bag. If you wanna make your kid a trick or treat tote bag, you could just get one of those canvas tote bags um, like this one. This is one I made for my girl's teacher. This is actually a design and class we did in um, my CF fans group. So we have a class and the free design is in the, the CF fans membership. But these little canvas tote bags are great. They're cheap and um, they're fun to embroider with different things. But you can make your kid a trick or treat bag. Um, also, I think this design would be adorable on a pillow for my couch. Like if I made two um, pillows where I did, I do the biggest design that's available and stitch that out on some fabric and then create a border and just do the envelope backing. That would be so cute as a pillow on my um, sofa. And then yes, a kitchen or a tea towel too. So that's where um, Jennifer says, that would be great. Yay, pillow. Yeah, so Dimples for Life said um, pillow too. Um, Renee asked, am I using double-sided tape before stitching down the ribbon? I'm not using double-sided. I'm using my um, paper tape that I have from Kimberbell. You can also use scotch tape or masking tape. Or if you have the um, double-sided tape, uh, tape that's good for sewing machines, um, that's not too sticky and won't gum up your needle, you can use that too. Yeah, so we're talking about the ruffle foot. Y'all make sure to go over and subscribe to um, Hooked on Applique's YouTube channel. She has some great videos on specifically how to work with the ribbon and showing that ruffle foot. So definitely go subscribe to her channel and check her out. Yay, Kimberly. Um, yeah, if you have a um, pillow blank, you can go stitch that on there super easy. Yeah, I love pillows. I'm all into pillows now. All right, we are almost done with stitching the
um, satin stitch for the pumpkin. And it must be lunchtime because I am starving. Okay, the next step is the guide or placement lines to show you where to put the ribbon. So I'm doing my ribbon in gray. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over my thread <coughs> to, <coughs> to gray. I'm gonna stitch the placement line in gray and then that final stitch in gray. And when you're stitching your ribbon to prepare it to gather, you do want to use a thread color that's gonna blend in to your ribbon. So you don't wanna use a super contrasting color, something that's, that blends in so it's not noticeable. All right, I have my gray ribbon tied off. Okay. And yeah, I'm gonna stitch it and then we'll take off. We'll take it to the table and I'll show you that taking off the water soluble top topper. So it's just gonna stitch these two placement lines. Another feature that was huge for me when I upgraded from my flatbed machine to this one is cutting jump stitches. I love a machine that cuts jump stitches. <laughs> Little things you take, you know, that uh, you realize bother you when you get your first embroidery machine that doesn't have all the bells and whistles, you know. All right, so... Here we are. So we have our super cute pumpkin applique and that applique portion is done. And we have those guidelines to where to put our ribbon. Now we have this water soluble topper on here. I'm gonna go ahead and tear that off. So it tears off super easy on those satin columns and that running stitch that comes out right from it. If you wanna tear it off before you do the running stitch, you can do that as well. Okay, so that is all off and done with. All right, now let's figure out what we're doing here. Okay, so the first thing is I'm going to cut the threads on here. I have it gathered as much as I can. And I'm going to cut those. Then I'm going to light up the edge here and do that to this side. All right, so this is my piece of ribbon ready to go. Now I'm gonna fold this down a little and I'm going to put it right at the top of this stitch and I'm going to use my tape and put that right there like that and then I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom I'm going to fold it under a little And tape and it's okay for the needle to go through this tape the adhesive on this tape is not sticky at all and you might just want to put one more piece so that this part stays down if you're working on a flatbed machine you may want to raise your presser foot so that it's a smidge higher um, especially or cover this whole thing in tape so that your presser foot doesn't get stuck and hooked on one of these ripples in the ribbon. On this one, it did that. And you can see where it looks a little funky right here because it, it got caught up. So that's something to keep in mind on the flatbed machine. Your presser foot is set to a certain height. You may wanna raise it or to prevent it from happening altogether is have this totally covered in tape and then it'll glide right over it. It has nothing to catch onto. On my 
free arm, my multi-needle machines, the presser foot moves with the needle. So I don't have that problem on the persona. Okay, so we got the same thing happening over here. Make sure it's gathered how I want. Cut threads and finish edge. Okay, and then fold over the top, put it right here. Cut the tape. <laughs> All right, and then fold over here. But it's perfectly fine for the raw edge of the ribbon to be coming out right there um, if you wanted to. Because as long as you finish the edge with the lighter or the, the fray check. Okay, so all of this is taped down. So we're going to go back over to the machine and it's going to do that same stitch it did a second ago, but it's going to be, um, I think, a bean stitch where it's, it goes back and forth more. It's more pronounced. And now it's going to tack down the ribbon um, right in the middle there on both sides of the pumpkin. Okay. All right. So it is ready to go. Okay, cross your fingers. Looks good. And I already had my gray thread loaded on there, which is what I wanted. Um, because of the ribbon I'm using. But I know like if I'd be doing this on a flatbed machine, I would have had to tape it more because I could see a bunch of spots where it would have got caught up or raise that presser foot to be higher. All right. So we are finished stitching. Let's go clean everything up now. So I love, I, I just got the new Cricut um, mini press um, before I just had a normal little mini travel iron. But one of my complaints about that one was that it didn't have an auto off feature. My new little Cricut easy press has an auto off and I love it because it saved me already a few times by turning off by itself. <laughs> so if you were like me and you forget to turn things off, Get, get the eat the cricket one. I didn't do a good job placing my ribbon right here. It's off to the side a little. That's okay. The three-year-old will not be able to tell. <laughs> All right. So it looks super cute. I love this. I'm going to want ribbon on all my appliques now. And Jennifer has a bunch of cute designs that have this effect on it. I think she has a cute Christmas tree one. That would be really fun for Christmas. Okay, I got this thread from my ribbon. Clean up a little bit. All right, no, that's good. So check it out. That is our pumpkin with the 3D ribbon. So now it's just 
cleanup. So I still have some water soluble topper stuck in between my fabric here. So I'm just go ahead and take those out and the size of this applique is super easy to pull out. Then I can still see my purple marks and I like to get rid of those right away. You can just spray water, but I find like you have to pretty much make the shirt soaking wet, but I can just take a Tide pin and rub it a little and it goes away super quick. But there have been times where I've made things and I didn't clean it up right away. And the next day the marks are gone because they disappear with air, just in the air as well. All right, so that's done. Now we can undo our frame and because it's on tearaway, the peel and stick tearaway, you can just do this and peel it up. And if it peels away nicely with these easy frames, I have been able to what I call patch the stabilizer. So I would take these little pieces out, but I can just put a, like for instance, this leftover piece that I had, I can peel it and stick it to the back just to cover that area of the hole and patch it and reuse it again and not have to take all this off and put a new piece on. So that's something that you can do with the easy frames if you have them. All right, so on the back of the shirt, we have our two things of stabilizer. We still have a little bit of tear away in here and it is totally up to you on if you want to tear that away. You do not have to. So it's, um, the sticky is a little bit harder to tear away. Um, so keep that in mind if, you, if you're a person that wants every little piece of tear away out of there don't use the sticky then because it does make it a little bit harder to get out. Um, I usually don't worry about getting that out, but I will trim this poly mesh. So it's ironed on, but you can pull it away. Um, and I usually just trim it where it's just right around the design itself. Okay. And this is a spot too, where you need to be careful not to cut your shirt. Makes me how I know. So I have my poly mesh. Use these scissors because it's better. And I trim, and I like to trim with curves and not points. So I won't trim a rectangle or square. I like to round the corners. And that's going to help the adhesive on the stabilizer, or you'll see the the fusey um, backing better. Okay, so that's done. Now, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and Repress that poly mesh and then we'll press the backing on top of that. So press this first. And if you have a big iron, you can use a big iron for this part. It doesn't need to be little. I just had this one already ready to go. If you have a heat press, the backing that I'm going to use works really well when you do it with a heat press. But I never think to pre-warm my heat press. This is not it. That's fusible no-show. This is it. If you so soft. And this is like super soft. It's a really soft side and then it has like a rough textured side and that's the side with the adhesive. So you put that down. So I'm gonna cut it 
to be a little bit bigger than that poly mesh stabilizer that I just trimmed around. All right, so I cut it first, and now I'm gonna trim it and kind of get it where I want it. And then I'll go and trim around off these corners. And it doesn't need to be pretty. Nobody's turning your shirt inside out, seeing how you um your back end looks. Now I have not done backing with this little mini iron yet, so I hope it works well. But I don't iron, I press, press and hold and put some pressure. That's why I say the heat press works really well if you have one. cord to my iron is not it's not plugged in a good spot for me to be working right here <laughs> all right so I think that's good and you can kind of feel with your fingers like it's not rolling up it's not peeling away okay um now a lot of trouble people have with these kinds of backings um like tender touch which is a sulky brand is that after you wash this and you put it in the dryer this peels off and sometimes it like peels off completely sometimes it's just rolling up at the corners an instant fix is to just re-iron it. The adhesive is still working. You just reactivate it um, and iron it back down. So now we have a cute pumpkin 3D ribbon applique shirt. The Heidi, I like it. It came out super cute. Oops. All right. So I hope you enjoyed to take two days tutorial of making our pumpkin shirt with the Rick Rack ribbon. Um, and we did this on my brother persona. But as I said at the beginning of the show, this can be done on any machine. This, when I do my tutorials, I like to rotate. Um, I have several different kinds of machines and I like to rotate them so that you can see how each of them work and how, how to use each of them for different projects. So let me go and check, check the chat. So yay, Eartha says it's cute. I'm so glad. Ah, um, Krista has a good um, pointer for helping with the backing is to avoid fabric softeners. That's a good idea. Thank you, Krista. All right, yay, everybody loves it. Okay, good, good, good. Um, all right, I saw Rosemary asked what kind of tape and LaDonna answered for me. Thank you. Yes, I'm using the Kimberbell paper tape. All right, so um, yay, Mike, I'm glad this is helpful for you. All right, so Crystal X, does the stabilizer pucker up after the design, after washing? So the things that we do to prevent that from happening is I used a fusible poly mesh, okay? The first stabilizer that I put on the inside of the shirt was a fusible one. And that's, that's starting you off with a really nice level playing field of making sure that your stitching is entering the fabric and won't get pulled and cause puckering either right after it's stitching or after washing. Um, we also used heat and bond on the back of the applique fabric and we activated that by ironing it before we did the satin stitches. That's also gonna help everything stay nice and clean after you wash it. Now, if you do have a little bit of puckering going on after you wash, usually an iron helps even all that out, okay? So, but those are the steps that we take to help prevent puckering. All right, yay. Um, Pauline, is the Kimberbell paper tape the same as surgical? Yes, you can buy medical tape at Walmart. Very, very similar. 
It just has a very low adhesive on it. That's what you're looking for. Yay, okay. Yay, I'm so glad this helped you out today, LaDonna. So um, I hope you all enjoyed today. And now it is time for the reason why y'all all stay till the end. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the giveaway. So thank you so much for everyone that stuck out. I know that was a bit of a long tutorial, um, but applique can, can make it long and all those satin stitches make it long. But I'm glad y'all saw it from start to finish because I know when I first started embroidery, that helped me a lot because like even stupid questions of how did you finish the back? How did do you pull all that stabilizer away? And like silly things like that, I know I had questions about when I started. So that's why I like to do everything for you so that you see the entire process. All right, so yes, drum drum roll, please. All right, let me figure out how to do this. I am sharing, share the screen, share the giveaway, share. Okay, so this is your last chance. If you have not commented, um, either through the YouTube live chat, remember you have to be signed in to do that, or commented on Facebook, do that now, say, I wanna win, I wanna win. I'm gonna give you 10 seconds um, to, to comment and your comment gets you entered. So you see on the screen there, it says 98 entries. Um, that is going to get you entered to win this giveaway, all right? And the giveaway is the entire library of designs from Hooked On Applique. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. Who's gonna win, who's gonna win? It's going to be Pauline Stewart. Congratulations, Pauline. You are the lucky winner of the entire Hooked on Applique design library. Everything, so yay, Pauline. I hope you're still here and watching. Where she's at, where she's at, we're looking for her in the comments. So Pauline was watching on Facebook, so thank you so much, Pauline. What I'm gonna need you to do to claim your prize is email me at hello at carlybell.com. There she is, there she is. All right, so much, so worth being up at 4 a.m. Pauline, thank you so much. Where are you located at, Pauline? And you are up that early. Um, but I'm gonna need you to email me, hello at carlybell.com. Let me put that back for you so you can see. And say, hey, I won the giveaway. And then I'm gonna get you hooked up with Jennifer and she's gonna send you all those designs which is amazing. And then you will be in Rick Rack ribbon heaven, making all the appliques and all the, the, the ribbon. So I hope you enjoy making all those awesome designs and, um, and that you show us all the fun stuff that you make using those designs. So Pauline is in Australia. Thank you so much from jo for joining us all the way from Australia. That's amazing. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I feel special. You woke up that early for me. <laughs> so um, yay. Okay. Um, so congrats to Pauline. We're going to get you all those designs. I'm pretty sure Pauline's already a member in my Facebook group. Um, if you are not a member and you want to join, it is free. The link for it is in the description box down below. And um, you can come join us and ask questions and post pictures of things you make. It's a really fun um, community of, of crafters that we love to help each other and, and um, you know, cheer each other on when we're making awesome things. Um, so that is it for today. So remember, you can go get the free download of the pumpkin rickrack file. I have the link in the description box so you can go get that. You can use coupon code CARLY to get 10% off of any other design that you want at Hooked on Applique. And don't forget, if you are interested in learning more about my uh, Sip and Stitch Holiday Workshop, which is um, a week-long workshop, we meet every day and we make a project from start to finish, but we do it on Zoom. So it's very interactive. You can ask questions. Um, and we go through the whole process of making five 
five projects. Where's all my projects? And I forgot to mention earlier, all the projects are, we're going to do everything on the PE 800 in a five by seven hoop. So to me, that's the most common machine that, um, and, and most everyone has a five by seven hoop. Several of these projects though are also come in four by four. So they're four by four friendly if you do have a smaller machine. Um, but we're doing them all on the PE 800 and I'm going to show you how to make a bag tag, a notebook cover with the cute little stocking. Um, we're going to make a sweatshirt with this rocking around the Christmas tree design and we'll have it right here in the upper left um, chest area. Uh, we're going to make a mug rug. So you're going to see how to make this. And then we're going to use this three applique, uh, three applique presents, and we're going to turn this into a pillow. So for this project, we'll need a sewing machine or one of those blank pillow covers, but we're going to make a pillow with this one. So those are the five projects. You get all five designs in multiple sizes, um, and you get a full supply list telling you everything that you need to complete each project. I'll have PDF um, color printout instructions um, if you just want to have that printed out when you are ready to make it. And then we'll have the video tutorials. And if you can't make the lives, we still have everything recorded and you get lifetime access to everything. So you can go back and watch these videos whenever you want, even next Christmas when you're like, oh, I want to make more of these notebooks and I forgot how to make them. You can go back and watch them whenever you want. And then we'll also have a live Q&A session um, the first Friday in December so that give people time to go through and make the projects. And if they have more questions, we'll do that through Zoom. So again, very interactive, lots of chat um, so that you can get all your and your questions answered. So yay. All right. Thanks for everyone for um, sticking around today. Um, what's going on next? Let's see what we got next week. I think on Tuesday, my CF fans membership group. Remember how I told you we do a class and a free design every month? This month, they're getting two free designs. I did a breast cancer awareness design earlier this month. And this is the design for the, the end of the month here. It is a, a trio of um, pumpkins and their applique and then we have these cute leaves that kind of come out from it as well and those are done um, within the design and we're going to turn this into a pillow because I told you I'm on a pillow kick right now so that's the CF fans class and free design that is going to be next Tuesday what is that the 25th and I'm pretty sure it's going to be at 10 30 a.m central standard time as most of my videos have been lately um, next Wednesday, 1030, we are going to unbox the November perfectly pieced um, subscription. So this is quilting in the hoop. Um, and this is going to show you what's going to be in next month's box. So you can see if you want to get it before it ships out. Um, that's going to be on Wednesday. And then our next sip and stitch, I think, will be on November 4th and I was looking back and it's been a long time since we did an embrilliance tutorial so I think we'll do a sip and stitch on embrilliance embroidery software and how to use it and how to get the most out of it so stay tuned for that remember you can get all the info on all the things on my website at carlybell.com where is that that is there so um all right let me check so it looks like Everything is good. So thank you so much again to Jennifer for um, working with me on the sip and stitch and not only giving us a free design and a coupon, but giving away her whole um, portfolio of designs. So thanks again, everybody. I hope you have a great rest of your Friday and great uh, weekend. And I will all next time. Okay, bye.